Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm Leo Laporte. It's time to get deep into our Macintosh again. We're doing a series that's really kind of high end, and yet I think you're going to find lots of ways, lots of interesting ways to use it. We continue on with folder actions next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody. Are you, are you enjoying folder actions? I hope I'm not getting too geeky for you. Uh, we'll get back to the less geeky stuff in a little bit, but I do think this is such a powerful tool. And once you understand what's available, and I, by the way, I don't think there's anything like this on any other computer operating system that I know of, not Linux, not Windows. The automation available on the Mac is pretty spectacular. Um, but it, it's not turned on by default. It takes a little digging. And if you watched last week's episode, maybe it's a little geeky. We're going to make it a little less geeky with a really useful utility from a company called NoodleSoft. <laughs> great name. Their product, which also has a great name, is Hazel. And it even has a little uh, dust, dust mop as its uh, logo. Automated organization for your Mac. Hazel will make a lot of sense for those of you who understand folder actions because it's very similar to folder actions on the Mac. Uh, it's, it's not free. You can try it for free for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's not expensive. $32 if you want a multiple seat license. $49 for four. Uh, they do charge for upgrades. The current version is Hazel 4. And honestly, I feel like everybody who has a Macintosh probably would find a use for Hazel. Let's, let's open it up and play with it a little bit. It really is very much like folder actions but for people who don't want to um, uh, learn Apple Script and things like that, Hazel lives in the toolbar, the menu bar up here. You see, there's the little Hazel dust mop. It's running all the time. We can actually have a variety of rules attached to Hazel. It does log, which is very helpful in uh, debugging it. But let's open up the Hazel interface because once you see it, I think you'll see it's very easy to use. So. We've got the basic preferences you'd expect. Show Hazel in the menu bar. Stop it or start it. Check for updates. Notification options. All of that. Um, but let's look. go back over here and look at folders. This is going to look very familiar. Really, this is using the folder actions mechanism, which... Uh, but, but in a kind of much easier way. I want to start with trash because this is something probably a lot of people would use and turn on. It's probably the first feature people turn on in Hazel. For instance, I can say, delete files sitting in the trash for more than one week. There's our gatekeeper once again. Oh, yeah, I forgot. To use Hazel, we have to turn on full disk access. So let me do that real quickly. That's a security feature. Also in the system preferences. Yes, Hazel is a system preference. See, it's right down there in the system preference pane. So we're going to go to security. And we're going to turn on full disk access. I'm going to have to unlock the lock here so I can make changes. That's okay. This is all good. Security is important. Go to full disk access. Now, in order to add full disk access, whoops, I forgot one little bit I got to do here. Let's go back to the Hazel system preference pane. I have to go to info, press the option key. Notice when I press the option key, this debug button shows up. Press the option key, hit debug, show Hazel helper in Finder. All right. <laughs> Let's put that aside. I'm now done. I don't need any more debugging. Now we go back to security and privacy. I've got full disk access here. It locked while I was gone. And now I'm going to drag the Hazel helper. It's like hamburger helper. Yep, it's going to quit. That's fine. 
And there it is. I've turned on full disk access. Run the Hazel preference pane again. Yay, Hazel's back on. Yay, Hazel is running. Now I can go to trash and I can click this box. This says delete file sitting in the trash for I think one week is a little quick, but you get to choose. This way you don't have to manually empty your trash. You can say, hey, if it's small, keep it. Um, I'm not going to turn that on. You can even have it automatically securely deleted. That's a nice feature. Secure deletion takes a while. So if it does that in the background automatically, that's fine. Here's another app, uh, a feature here called App Sweep. This is kind of interesting. And I always turn this on. When an application is thrown away, you know, you drag it from the application folder to trash, App Sweep will offer to uninstall extra bits of the application stored away in other folders. Don't you love that? Now, normally that does it for the logged in user only. If you click this box, it'll do it for all users. This is a, and it only does it once they log in and says, hey, we deleted this app. Do you want to delete these bits? That's nice by itself that it probably be worth the, the purchase price for Hazel, but we can do a lot more. We can modify how things are handled in the downloads folder, for instance. If I download a file more than once, you know, you've seen that parenthesis one, two, three, or four. It'll automatically throw out duplicate files. Don't worry, it warns you. If you've got incomplete downloads, you can have them automatically delete. You can also add these rules. These are really all folder actions, but Hazel's doing it automatically. You can put label colors on newly added items. In fact, in fact, let's let's edit it and see what it does because it's it's handy. This is this is how Hazel works. With uh, you probably recognize this from email. Email, uh, for instance, like a filter. These are Hazel actions. And look, there's a little note attached. Let's click the note, and it'll explain what this does. Okay, it turns when we... Uh, this rule will color items blue when added to the folder. Note the use of the last date, last matched in this case, et cetera, et cetera. So we can look at these. Once you get used to this, and it is, it's very much like creating email filters. You talk about conditions... You set label colors, but there's many other things you can do. There's lots of rules, including, oh, running Apple Script, JavaScript, or Automator workflow, or even a shell script, which means you can use shell, Perl, Python. You can basically use any language on your Macintosh. So this gets very powerful. In effect, what, we've, what we see here is a way to do folder actions without going into the folder actions control panel or editing Apple scripts. So we can add a folder. We can make make that folder do a variety of things. Hazel basically is an interface to folder actions. So for instance, let's um, let's look at my pictures uh, folder. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here and pictures and I'm going to say I want to modify my pictures folder and I'm going to set up some rules. Let's add a rule. When I copy stuff into the pictures folder, uh, let's say the, um, look at all of these things, the date created, the great modified, the current time, subfolder death. And this is where, you, again, you can get very powerful. Um, you can run a shell script automatically and, if, and pass a true or false or a one or a zero back, and it'll respond to that. So let's say if the extension is jpeg and we're going to make a couple of these because sometimes jpegs are jpgs i'm going to say if any of these conditions are met i'm going to add another one if the extension is jpeg so that'll take any kind of jpeg do the following to the matched file or folder i could move it i could create a folder called jpegs and automatically move them there I could sort them into a subfolder. And actually, that's probably what I'm going to want to do with this. And we'll talk about this next week a little bit, too. I'm going to want to, for instance, have it automatically sorted into date folders, subfolders, based on the file creation date. You see how powerful this is? We can do that with a script as well. Uh, this is really a powerful tool, a really wonderful tool I think you're going to like. I'm going to cancel that because I don't really want this filter on here. But you can, it's, you're really doing folder actions. Uh, and once you delve into it, it's pretty, pretty powerful. 
They even have a lot of sample rules so that you can uh, start with, with something so you can easily see how it works. And again, like last week, having these sample rules is great because you can then edit them and understand a little bit better how to create these. It's an image, move it to the pictures folder, that kind of thing. This is a really handy tool. Hazel, uh, not expensive, about 30 bucks. I think a very useful tool. It's not necessary if you're comfortable with computer programming, if Shell Script or Automator, and that's what we're going to cover next week, is how to do this by hand. That's going to be the most advanced folder action and our final folder action segment in this series. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for the question, too, Mr. Homebrew and Philly Doju Gumbum, because I wouldn't even have gone down this path if you hadn't asked. This episode of Hands on Mac brought to you by, of course, LastPass. Can you manage identities and still provide good security behaviors while your employees are remote? You can with LastPass. You'll get secure password storage, convenient password sharing, streamlined logins, centralized control for your IT department, and access from anywhere. When user identities are centrally and securely managed, a business can ensure that the correct employee is doing the right thing and has the right access. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's LastPass.com slash twit. And... That's Hands on Mac for this Friday. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I love hearing your comments and questions. You know, it's a great place to go is our Twit community. That's where I got this original question, www.twit.community. You can leave comments on this episode, all of our episodes, ask questions. We love seeing you there. And, of course, our chat room during our live episodes. That's irc.twit.tv. Subscribe to Hands on Mac. You'll find it in every podcast application. Just search for Hands on Mac. Press that subscribe button. That way you'll get it automatically. You can listen at your leisure. Or you'll find all the episodes at our website, twit.tv slash H-O-M. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. One more twit? Well, check out Hands on iOS, twit.tv slash H-O-I, where I teach you all about iPhones, iPads, AirPods, Apple Watches, and so much more. If you want to get the most out of your device, then you got to check out Hands on iOS, twit.tv slash H-O-I.